Okay guys, today is the day I finally delid my i3 8350K and if that seems like it's a weird decision, then that's because it really kind of is. At about $179 at least when I got it, this processor is on the cheap end and it really doesn't make much sense to buy a D-Lid tool then buy something like Liquid Metal, which I'm gonna be using, and go through all this extra hassle to get a processor that barely performs in gaming on par with the i5-8400, which is just another, what, $8 more. But it's really more for you guys and to also see just how bad is Intel's stock thermal solution. In addition, I'm curious to see if the thermals that I gain uh, from this procedure actually end up giving me a little bit more uh, overclocking headroom than I had before with the stock thermal interface material. So I'm actually going to be running this test on this i3 about three different times. In fact, I've already run the stock test with the H100 IV2, the stock TIM left in place on the uh, i3 processor, and uh, the clock speed at 4.8 gigahertz on 1.35 volts, and that voltage is set. So uh, the stock temperature max that I saw was 67 degrees Celsius. So the first thing I'm gonna do is replace the stock TIM with some uh, thermal paste I have lying around, which I'm just using the uh, C7 CryoRig stuff uh, that they sent with that processor. And then when I'm done with that test, I'm also gonna then put on the liquid metal and see just what kind of gains we get there. Also worth noting though is that the C7 thermal paste is also the only thermal paste that I'm using on top of the IHS between it and the H100 IV2 cold plate. So the only thing we're testing here is the uh, Intel stock TIM versus other thermal materials. So I guess the only thing really left to do here is to go ahead and run those other tests and see just what kind of temperature gains we can see. Oh, and it looks like we have a visitor. Okay, a few materials that I wanted to make mention of, as I already mentioned this, this is the uh, CP7 thermal paste from CryoRig. Anytime I'm using thermal paste in this video, this is what I'm going with. Over here is the liquid metal I'm using. I'll leave an Amazon link below to this stuff, but it's Thermal Grizzly uh, liquid metal. And then for this, because this is conductive stuff, um, I'm around the die, I'm gonna be putting some nail polish and this came after watching a Gamers Nexus video. I'll also link that down below. Uh, they recommended sort of putting this on any capacitors or anything around the die because it'll form a thin coating that'll protect it from getting shorted out if you accidentally do go overboard on your, uh, your liquid metal at all. And then to reseal the IHS back to the actual, um, the actual uh, the circuit board there, uh, we just have some uh, silicone that we're going to apply uh, around where uh, there used to be some. And then, of course, over here in this little baggie is the D-Lid tool. This is not a DeBauer one, uh, but it uses the same general principle as uh, DeBauer's D-Lid tool. So we're also going to be using that in the process. Okay, so the way that this uh, particular uh, D-Litter works is the same basic way that the DeBauer one works. So all you do here is find the triangle on uh, or on the inside of the D-Lid tool and you take your processor and put it in with the triangle also lined up there. You then take the top half of it, which will just fit on top, and you secure the two halves together by putting through uh, these three just uh, thumb screws and then you'll simply turn the Allen key onto the Allen part here and it'll delit it for you. And there I heard that audible pop and that should mean that it is delitted and we are ready to go. So let's take a look. And anytime you work with tech, it's always recommended to have some of these little blue, like, spudgers laying around uh, to pry things. There it is. And there is a processor with an IHS and the little main circle board. You can see the traces sort of around it. Okay, now that I have uh, tested the i3 with just the CP7 from uh, CryoRig, 
that'd be this stuff here um, under the IHS. Now we're actually gonna apply the liquid metal. And um, if you need some help with applying this, I highly recommend you check out uh, the tutorial by Gamers Nexus. Again, uh, really does a good job of showing you a good way of doing that. Also worth noting is that this particular thermal paste, or rather this liquid metal, does come, I did just drop it there, uh, it does come with some of these uh, black Q-tips, like this guy right here. And they're nice because they're not overly absorbent, but they also allow you to sort of see exactly where the liquid metal is. Also worth noting is this liquid metal is a gallium base. So you cannot use it with an aluminum heat sink. Uh, so those of you that may be considering using this elsewhere, um, this stuff here, this liquid metal, do not use it with aluminum because it will corrode it over time and eat away at it. So uh, definitely just be careful. Now I'm gonna sort of do what Gamers Nexus does and just drip a tiny bit of it out. And you'll notice there that I did just shoot a bunch of that out um, at one time, but because this is um, it's a plunger, you can suck um, any of that right back into the tube, which I just did there. Now, if we rotate over here, you'll notice that I have just a little bit of liquid metal sitting there. Um, and now I'm gonna take that one of those black Q-tips and just sort of uh, spread it around as evenly as I possibly can. And it does want to move fairly readily, so you do kind of have to work it a little bit to get to sort of move around how you need it to. Now, I even actually have a little bit of extra um, on that processor right now, and you can sort of see that it's sort of pooled there. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I am, however, as more of a precaution, going to coat the, uh, the area around the die with some nail polish and that's just so that um, especially those four contact points you sort of see down here that's just so if if some of it does make it over there it won't be a problem it won't actually uh, harm anything and uh, again that gamers nexus video does a great job of explaining exactly why nail polish is actually really nice to work with uh, when you're trying to uh, make this as safe as possible without the risk of killing a processor. And now we just have to wait for that nail polish to dry before we can actually reattach the IHS. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is wipe off this uh, CP7 thermal paste and replace it with liquid metal. Now, if you plan on using liquid metal on top of the IHS, just make sure, I'm safe with mine, make sure that whatever your heat sink is has copper exposed or nickel plated or something to that effect and not aluminum because again the liquid metal will corrode any aluminum it comes into contact with so, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, test for one more hour because um, each test is one hour long and see what the final results are here okay now that testing is over the numbers are in so let's go ahead and check out the chart to see just how all these different thermal compounds fared so as you look at the chart the left side thermal compound is going to be what is actually touching the actual dye and then the one to the right of the slash is the thermal compound used on top of the ihs uh, between it and the cold plate of the h100 iv2 you'll notice the stock tim used by intel is the worst performing that's not surprising coming in at 67 degrees celsius under full load then when we switch that stock tim to the uh, cp7 from cryo rig we dropped a couple degrees however it's worth noting that's more or less within the margin of error we move on down to replacing the cp7 touching the die with the liquid metal and we have uh, 58 degrees celsius there that was a solid result and then unsurprisingly when we replaced both the stock tim with liquid metal as well as the uh, material between the IHS and the cold play of the H100 IV2 also with liquid metal we saw the lowest temperatures at 56 degrees Celsius. So if you're on the Intel side of things where Intel is still using that pretty much crap thermal paste um, under the IHS and either being lazy cheap or some combination of both you do get some pretty great performance gains from uh, d 
updating your processor and replacing it with a really quality thermal interface material. The biggest thing this all comes down to though is cost. With a $40 D-Lid tool plus another $12 to $15 spent on the liquid metal compound, that's a lot of extra money you're putting into just lowering the temperatures of your processor by about 10 degrees. Some people may see bigger gains depending on your case solution as well as your cooling solution. But even if you're using a processor like an 8600K which has six cores and six threads, it's still probably not worth investing all that extra money into because you could instead take that money and transition it towards um, upgrading to something like the 8700 instead of the 8600K and that would give you six cores and 12 threads as opposed to just six cores and six threads. If however you are either willing to uh, delay the processor without a tool and risk it on your own or if you know somebody that already has a tool or maybe you already have a D-Lid tool for these processors lying around because maybe you're upgrading a system or you just know somebody that has that tool and you have access to it, then the uh, cost of the liquid metal may be worth it, especially if you're somebody that likes to push the overclocks as much as possible. Regardless, for delitting my first processor, I will say the process was extremely painless, at least when you're using such a good tool as mine. And by the way, I left a lot of links down below to the various things I used in this video. So if you're interested in them, go ahead and click down below to check them out um, over on Amazon and it'll just make it easy for you to get the materials if you're looking into doing this. But regardless, like I said, the D-Lid process was not scary at all. Um, it was actually much simpler than I thought it might be. And uh, for the gains that I got, I'm likely going to do this with most of my Intel processors going forward, uh, mainly because I just already have the tool and there's no reason not to do it at this point because it is so easy. However, I should point out that you do this at your own risk and if you break something, that's all on you. And also don't uh, go back to Intel for a warranty RMA or anything like that because when you take off the IHS, you are voiding that warranty. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of this entire process. Is this something you may look into now, um, especially with as simple as it's been made by some of these D-Lid tools that just do a really great job simplifying the entire process? Uh, let me know in those comments down below. And also, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things below help out a lot. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.